Hi everyone, I'm Simon. I'm a data scientist at the Humanitarian Data Exchange and also split my team, uh, time as a senior open data developer at the British Red Cross. Um, Humanitarian Data Exchange, also known as HDX, is an open data portal for humanitarians and those working in development. It has over 5,000 data sets now, shared by over 200 organisations. Here we can see the front page, uh, slightly old on the data sets. Um, to explain how big a fan of HDX I am, I want to talk about the time before it. Um, I had a project to find, uh, do a map about Uganda for the Red Cross. After about a week of emailing people, I finally found the key holder who had the data set. Uh, emailed him and he was like, brilliant, you can have it. Come with a USB to my office, you can have it. The problem was he was in Kampala, I was in London, and I never got the data set. Now I just type in Uganda admin and I get the whole list of them. It saves me absolute hours in the work I do. Um, so humanitarian open data portal for development, it's nothing new, but HDX is picking up a lot of momentum. And I think that's a bit to do with their network engagement. Um, they have data labs in Senegal, in um, Kenya, and they have offices based around, and they have whole teams engage in different organizations all the time. And that can be helping them with their open data policy, helping them decide what data they should be able to share and not share, and also building data visualizations with different partners. Uh, so here's a list of just some of the uh, organizations we collaborated with. Um, so in, we have about 10 people in the team that are constantly doing this outreach. Um, so some of the products we make, uh, <laughs> uh, we do data visualizations for people. So this was IOM's Missing Migrants Project. Uh, this is a project where they're tracking where migrants are disappearing around the world. Um, to help them share the data and get some advocacy behind it, we built a data visualization with them where you can explore where, where the uh, events have happened. And then this is live updating. Every time they upload their data on HDX, uh, this data viz updates automatically and they've got this on their website. So it's sort of the collaboration we have going in the community we build to try and get more data shared into the open. One of the projects we're promoting is Hexel, the Humanitarian Exchange Language. And this is a data standard for humanitarians that we try to keep as simple as possible, and it's all based on hashtags. Uh, hopefully, over the next few, few slides, you'll all be pros at it and be able to do it yourself. Um, so here we have a common data set in a response, uh, who, what, where is used for coordinating humanitarian response. Um, humanitarians work in spreadsheets. For better or for worse, that's not going to change any time soon. Uh, so we built the data standard around that principle. And to add Hexel to your data set, you add a line below your headings, and then you uh, insert the standardized hashtags. Uh, these hashtags all fit on that one postcard that you saw at the beginning. And it's not the most useful data standard. You can make it really technical and really flashy and do lots. But the fact is, people are starting to actually use this, which is much further than we got with other projects. Um, so what that means, are, here we have an example card of, uh, in Arabic and the postcards available in many different languages. And what this means now is we can get machines to go in and start reading what data is there. They expect the standard headings and can build products off that. So one example product we have is, we put on HDX recently, is Quick Charts. This is a data set I uploaded in 2014 during the Ebola response about where the Ebola treatment centers were. Now, the Quick Charts has automatically gone in there, looked at what headings are available, and drawn appropriate charts for that data set. So there was, I think, it took me 15 seconds to make this with the tool. I uploaded the data set and basically clicked saved. Um, so we're also talking about uh, open data and closed societies. And HDX have recently released a tool called HDX Connect. You can upload your data in a traditional map manner, but sometimes you want, might want a bit more control over who has access to your data. So HDX Connect allows you to upload metadata. So now, if we think about the sensitivity of data at the bottom end, um, with the most sensitive, you could not share your data, share it privately on HDX, or share the metadata. So you're surfacing that this data exists to other people, but you still have control over who you're sharing it with. Um, if we look at the results page for the Philippines here, we can see Mindanao um, displacement data set. This is, um, there's an insurgency in the Philippines island, and Ocha Philippines has decided this is a useful data set for some organizations to have, 
but they don't want it completely out in the open for everyone. So here it's advertised and you can click request access and up pops a form where you can put in your name, your email and the reasons you're using it and now it's up to the data owner whether they feel comfortable sharing it with you. So the great thing is we're now surfacing all this data that was previously siloed because of sensitivity to other organisations, it does exist, and then you use the human relationships to decide whether that's worth sharing. We're also considering assessment data as well. There's a wealth of information sitting in assessment data, but of course this is not something you want on an open uh, data portal. It contains personal uh, identifiable information, and it has a lot of uh, sensitive data that you don't want to share. But people do share data from assessments. Here we can see a map of uh, the percentage of assessed sentiments reporting adequate access to food. Um, so here we're actually seeing data from assessment and we're trying to work out at uh, what level is it safe to share data. Um, so we're coming up with an algorithm plus a process about analysing particular questions and working out if we break this down by location and then if we disaggregate by gender, is it still safe to share? If we disaggregate them by their uh, occupation, is, is that safe to share that data? And the more disaggregations you do, the more useful it is, but the more likely it can be used to identify people. So we're coming up with an algorithm to identify where that line should be. And then there's also a human process to decide that always involved, because there's always a political context as well to the data. Is, is it sh safe to share this data? But this means then from assessments, we can get data that can be built for data visualizations. You can cut it the way you need for your project. Here, we, this was a survey after Nepal, um, asking about how the response was going over time, and we provided disaggregators by location and the number of rounds through as they're doing them month by month. Um, and lastly, um, HDX are opening a center for humanitarian data in The Hague. It's going to be focusing on data services, data policy, data literacy, and network engagement. So I encourage all your organizations to reach out for them, and that's starting next year. Thank you.